we if we are able to come up with an answer, I'll give the answer. Uh, and again, these are going to be transcribed, written down, and provided in terms of an overall question and answer sheet that we put on the website. So, uh, if I if we're going to delay answering the question for whatever reason, I'll let you know that as well. So, um, first question: Can we assume that the retired satellite is uncontrolled, or can it be reactivated to become a cooperative satellite? The answer is the assumption is that will be uncontrolled, but cooperate team. So very specific on that word. It's not cooperative in the sense that it has the ability to control itself. Again, it is un the assumption is that it is uncontrolled, but that we will have made contact with the organization that actually uh, owns the satellite or, or did control it previously to provide as much information as we possibly can on it itself. Um, I, at this time, I don't know if it's even feasible. My, our assumptions going in is that it cannot be reactivated for any number of reasons. Um, the other question was, who is the government, who, who in the government is going to be the system integrator? And the answer is a qualified government agency identified as a BAA. Uh, one question was, how do you plan to choose the apertures? So and there was some discussion relative to frequency here. So, I'll, so there's two sort of pieces to that answer. The first one, again, is the retired satellite candidate that is selected is going to be done via a matrix of evaluations um, that were identified previously, or at least notionally, in the programmatic session or the technical session, I forget. But the government is going to go through and create a matrix associated with various characteristics that we see are important to provide information relative to what that candidate satellite is, uh, and then use that as the first criteria for a down select. Um, the, the mission, which is then translated to a frequency, which is the thing that we will particularly ask for when we ask for the satellites in, in general, uh, will target existing ground segment hardware. So we're not in any way, shape, or form saying that we're going to build anything new on the ground to talk to a repurposed satellite. And in, in addition, nominally, it will be a lower frequency. So as an example, it will be UHF or VHF um, for the demo specifically. There was, there was a follow-on question, which wasn't really a question, it was sort of a, a comment related to the ultimate transition, which, which you'd like to be able to have at higher frequencies, as an example, potentially to do other things. Um, again, the DARPA demonstration is not to prove every single potential technical sort of instantiation of a, a concept. It is instead to demonstrate the feasibility and buy down the risk at, at, and taking a much higher risk posture to prove that it's even possible. So. <coughs> Uh, there were a number of questions which basically all of these questions will be put off to later because there's a lot of details. Differences between the uh, ground guidance and onboard algorithms, um, uh, access to the online estimates of the satellite's attitude that the friend down computes, type of control requirements in the spacecraft ACS carrying the friend, uh, etc. So all those we will take the interface or we'll take the question and try to put more details into it uh, up front. Because those are, those are fairly detailed. They begin to step across this notion of where do we define the interface associated with the kind of information that's provided. Uh, another question, how much do we know about the structure and spin rates of the target aperture ahead of time, uh, aperture and or satellite attached to the, uh, aperture attached to the satellite? Um, honestly, before the BAA comes out, uh, you will know as much as we do from open source information. Um, there will be a study that will be done by the government to try to bound what those, what those rates are and it will be provided prior to kickoff. So that's, uh, we're, we're, we're moving quickly, we'd like to move out quickly and so more than likely we will not have the detailed answers to that. Uh, another question which was asked and I, and I was mis, uh, misled in not bringing this out is where are the operations going to be done? Um, as I indicated, the first operation it is believed will be done in the geo belt. That operation being the dispensement of the pod and then the collection of it. Uh, there is some question about whether that will actually happen in geo, and that's again part of the trade space and the evaluation, which I think I very much like the folks who are doing the commercial hosted payload evaluation of dispensing to come back and say, is this a reasonable thing to do, or are you going to upset the entire world by kicking things out in geo, and do we need to move up or down or left or right before we do that? Um, the second operation, all of the, the intention is to do all of the repurposing operations in the graveyard belt. That, that is the intention. So 
So again, I mentioned that, I, I didn't mention that outright directly, but I did say that in the course of doing mission operations analysis for where we will do the ground site communications, we have to think about, we will be traversing up and down in the figure eight that you typically get depending upon the inclination, as well as potentially moving around the Earth at a degree per se. So uh, the assumption is we will do all this at the rate of the moment. Um, it is also assumed uh, at this point in time, the other thing I didn't say, but the intention is to do two simultaneous repurposes. So we will go to one satellite, execute as much as we can, either prove or disprove or run into whatever problems we have. But then in addition, I very much like to be able to do another set of repurposing, hopefully on a different satellite with a larger aperture, again, to sort of, to, to sort of push the bounds. Um, the, the, the issue there is repeatability and the ability to prove to most especially to the insurance industry that we have taken enough steps and really understand the, the technical techniques required to buy down the risk posture so that essentially the commercial market can now maybe think about going out and doing even wilder things than what we've talked about. So anyway, that's the idea. That will be, unfortunately, that's limited by the total amount of fuel we have and where the candidate satellites are. So right, we've, we've got to do all this trade to sort of figure that out. Uh, there were two questions. Uh, the, des the desire for STEM is likely going to be in conflict with the standard ITAR and or pre-publication contract clauses. Will any provisions be made for university participation? The answer is absolutely yes. We want university participation. Uh, and actually, um, at, I have several programs at uh, DARPA specifically. Some are funded under different uh, activities. Uh, that have different, uh, uh, Tina talked about 6-3 funding as an example. There's different levels of funding, 6-3, 6-2, 6-1. 6-1 typically is fundamental research which allows anybody to sort of publish without getting pre-publication authority. Um, the intention is, I, I don't know whether I will be able to have any 6.1 money for this, so therefore the assumption is we will just, we want the university to participate absolutely. There may be pre-publication requirements on it. We have to work that out with the universities. If we can work it out, great. If we can't, I understand. But the intention is absolutely to have universities participate either directly or as a team members on, on some tour. Um, the, next, the next series of questions were envisioning the satellites being powered. What, what do we envision? And then do you assume they will all have propulsion or will they be positioned by the servicer? Uh, I'm going to defer that question because we're going to go into detail on what we expect from the satellite at the November 9th. Uh, another question, are there any launch agency constraints for U.S. foreign launch vehicles or sites? And so